everyone. Uh, welcome to the last part of uh, Lesson 5. This is Part 6. And you're here again with Dr. Ken. So Part 6 is all about parallel resonance. You've already been through series resonance and there are going to be some similarities. But there is also going to be a few differences with parallel resonance. So we're going to look at a table at the end that will summarise the similarities and the differences. If the inductive and capacitive currents in a parallel circuit are equal, they completely cancel each other out. This condition is called resonance. It's when XL and XC equal each other. And that's always going to happen at a particular frequency, called the resonant frequency. If the circuit also has a resistive branch, its current will be the only current that is taken from the supply. So what that final uh, point is making is that when XL and XC equal each other, they effectively cancel each other out, making it appear as though they are open circuit, or what we would technically call very high impedance. And the only thing taking current from the circuit is the resistive branch. But hopefully that will become a little clearer as we go through the slides. So here we have it. Parallel resonance, no R or no resistance. So you can see here we've got a uh, blue applied voltage. We have a green current through the inductor. We have a orange current through the capacitor and we have an I total. So as you can see here in the diagram, IC and IL are the same length. So I can top to tail the green one against the orange one and come back to zero, or I can top to tail the orange one against the green one and come back to zero. The resultant phaser is this one over here. So phaser diagram is no current. So Phaser addition of IT, IT equals zero. There is no current. So when a pure inductor and a pure capacitor are in parallel and have the same reactance, that is, they are at resonance, the total current in the circuit falls to zero and it makes it look as though the capacitor and the inductor are not there. So in other words, they have gone high impedance. Their resistance is so high that it draws no current. But what happens now if we add some resistance? We're going to add some R now. So look at, look at our circuit diagram. We have a pink current through the resistor, a green current through the inductor, an orange current through the capacitor, and I total is in red. If we look at our phaser diagram, you can see our IC and our IL are the same value, but they're exactly the same. So again, I can tip to tail the IC on the IL and I'll come back to zero, or I can tip to tail the IL on the IC and I'm going to come back to zero, and I'm effectively going to end up with phaser addition IT equals IR. So the only component in the circuit, you can see my cursor circling, is the current in the resistor. So the two currents, the current in the capacitor and the current in the inductor cancel each other out and there is no current flowing in either component. So in a parallel circuit containing R, L and C at resonance, only current taken from the supply is the current in the resistance. Now I'll just quickly explain here, there's no such thing obviously as a pure inductor or a pure capacitor. So they do take just a fraction of energy from the supply to keep up that response of cancelling each other in and out. But we'll explain that too in a moment. So here's the recirculating current. In diagram A, here, you can see a magnetic field 
is building up and it's taking current from the circuit. But you'll notice only a little bit of current to the capacitor. In circuit B, the current's now flowing the other way. Current's flowing into the inductor as the field on the capacitor tries to collapse. So the ma effectively, in the first image, the magnetic energy is stored, and as it collapses, it feeds into the capacitor. Then on a quarter cycle later, that energy feeds back into the inductor, building up the magnetic field. The magnetic field collapses, storing the energy back in the capacitor, and it oscillates backwards and forwards. The term we use this is a tank circuit, because it's like water sloshing backwards and forwards between either side of a tank. So in a parallel circuit at resonance, a circulating current flows between the capacitors and the inductors. And those, capa those currents can be quite high because the only thing restricting the current in the circuit is probably a little bit of resistance in the wire in the inductor and the wires connecting the two devices together. So here's the equation that's important for you. Uh, frequency at resonance, so FR equals 1 on 2 pi square root LC. It's exactly the same formula that we use for series resonance. So the actual formula for resonance doesn't change. And again, I'll point out sometimes they go um, F small o for frequency at oscillation. It's the same thing. So frequency R at resonance equals 1 on 2 pi pi square root of LC. And again, FR is the frequency at resonance, 2 pi, 6.28. L is the inductance in Henry's, and C is the capacitance in Farad's. So let's compare the two. Parallel and series resonance. So we're going to compare parallel resonance and series resonance. So on the top of the drawing here is series resonance. So we have two components in series and when they're in resonance, if you look at the diagram, the red is the current. The current goes very high at resonance because its reactances go low. And you can see at frequency at resonance, the green circuit, the impedances. So the reactances interact and the impedance goes very low. Therefore, you get a lot of current. But for parallel resonance, that's the bottom half of the page, you can see everything changes in exactly the opposite direction. At resonant frequency, the supply current goes very low. So you can see the current drops off at resonance. But the impedance, the green line, goes very, very high. So that's the impedance, goes very, very high. So here's a little comparison table. So we have our aspects or characteristics down the left-hand side, impedance, current, phase angle, effect, and the equations that we use. Then the first column is parallel resonance, and the next column is series resonance. So if we look at impedance as a characteristic in a parallel circuit, resonance goes to its maximum, so that will mean that current will go very low. So here you can see current goes very low, minimum. Phase angle is zero, so still phase angle of zero. The effect is we get circulating currents, they can be quite high, between the inductor and the capacitor, and the equation is Frequency at resonance equals 1 on 2 pi square root of LC. If we then do series resonance, impedance is at its minimum. It goes to its smallest. Therefore, the supply current goes to its maximum. The phase angle is, goes to zero. And the voltages across L and C can be exceedingly high, much, much higher than the supply, and quite often so high that they break down the capacitors and the insulation on the conductors that make up the inductor. So you get breakdown of insulation and breakdown of capacitors 
particularly for series residents, it gets very high voltages. And of course, the formula stays the same, no change. So here's a quick little worked example for us. Um, we have here 100 volts AC, a 50 ohm resistor in parallel with 25 millihenries in parallel with 1 microfarad. So we want to know what the resonant frequency is and what the total current taken from the circuit at resonance is. Well, the, we could actually do the second one easily first because we know these two are going to cancel each other out, but let's go through the math. The solution, look at our values. We have R at 500 ohms. We have L at 25 millihenries. We have C at 1 microfarad. And our voltage equals 100 volts. So what's the resonant frequency? Our equation is equal to FR equals 1 on 2 pi square root LC. So we get uh, 1 on 6.28 multiplied by 25 10 times 10 to the minus 3 for millihenries times 1 times 10 to the 6 for microfarads. We do the math and our resonant frequency is 1007.1. Well, we'd call that about 1000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. And then to calculate the total current, I total is simply the voltage divided by the resistance. So we're going to have 100 volts divided by 500 ohms. We're going to have 0.2 of an amp will be the only current flowing in the circuit, which we could have easily calculated first rather than second, but it doesn't matter. So some of the places, um, applications for parallel resonance is to gain um, insertion of frequencies into the mains for control tones. And you can see here pictures of capacitors in parallel with reactors and um, in this particular case, you've got a 1 millihenry inductor at 400 amps or 12 kV at a frequency of 1,045 hertz. So you can see over here, here's a picture of the circuit. It allows them to inject frequencies onto the mains. So high power, high voltage reactors and capacitors forming parallel circuits at a resonant frequencies, creating high impedances at 1,045 for those control tones which turn on and off hot water services in a particular supply authority's network. So let's summarise now. Uh, this is a, a summary of the, all the lessons, all the lessons for five. So our ch chapter or our lesson summary. In a parallel circuit containing pure inductive and pure capacitive branch, the inductive and capacitive currents tend to cancel each other out and their values can be then added algebraically. Next, if the circuit has a resistive branch, the total current can be found using Pythagoras' theorem and or a phasor diagram. If the inductive branch of a parallel circuit does have resistance, the total circuit current is found using a phasor diagram. Summary 2, the impedance of an RLC, that's resistance, inductance and capacitive circuit, equals the applied voltage divided by the total circuit current. A parallel LC circuit has a high impedance at resonance and circulating currents between the components are only limited by their own internal reactances. This can cause high voltages to be produced and some reasonably high currents as well. To determine the currents, phase angles and impedances in a parallel AC type, we have to do three things. One, calculate the impedance of each of the branches. That's what you've got to do first. Make sure you work out the impedance of each branch. Then you can calculate the current in each of those branches, just Ohm's law. Applied voltage divided by the impedance. And then three, find the phase angle of each branch by using trigonometry or a phasor diagram, depending on what information and data is available to you. Four, find the total current 
in its and its phase angle to the supply. Again, you can use trigonometry or a phasor diagram and measure it off. And finally, calculate the circuit impedance using Ohm's law by dividing the total current into the supply voltage will give you the total circuit impedance. Well, I hope you've enjoyed all our sections on lesson five, and this completes section six. I've also uh, found some nice YouTube videos solving parallel RC circuits, solving for total current in parallel, and solving for power in parallel RLCs. And again, can't play those for you here within my presentation, but I shall put them as links on the e-learning spaces so that you can get access to them.